we all know there's massive, rapid technological advancement, um, but it's also coupled with very severe economic pressure. Um, yeah, I, I know most of you are all familiar with the kind of um, figures I'm talking about. Um, you know, there was one horrific quarter in the US where all households lost 10% of their net worth. The UK um, public debt is likely to be one trillion pounds by the end of this year. Um, and uh, Spain's unemployment rate, if you believe the, the official figures, is at about 21%, which means it's, it's probably considerably higher. So um, perhaps it's, um, it's not unsurprising that um, uh, most organizations have focused on cutting costs to create efficiencies in all elements of their business over the last two or three years. They need to create these efficiencies in order to survive um, and work their way through the recession. However, we do seem to be in a sort of a, a new phase. Um, CEOs <coughs> and shareholders are all sort of looking for growth, it would seem, as cost cutting can only take an organization so far. And this seems to be reflected um, in the kind of media coverage and chatter and so on. Um, this is just a, um, a top line uh, trend graph showing mentions of the word growth in a business context in the top European markets. And, and perhaps it's an indicator of this greater focus of what they're looking for. Uh, and a primary means of driving growth is innovation. Uh, it's, it's a means of doing things differently. Uh, and we can innovate clearly in, in many different ways using digital media, and we can um, categorize them in, in many different ways. Um, but there do seem to be two essential drivers to this. Um, the first one is, is better data. Uh, this gives us richer insights, and therefore we can develop more effective ideas. And the second one is we have better both consumer and better marketing technologies, which means we can actually act on those insights and deliver um, uh, better connections with consumers, which are more effective. And we can also optimize our marketing communications delivery. Um, but who here, who here browses the internet while they're watching TV? Yeah, well, it's, it's way more representative than the figures. But I mean, 43% of Europeans routinely browse the internet while they're watching TV. So whatever we do, we have to uh, plan all of our media communications in a consumer-centric manner and move people through the purchase funnel. So for example, with, we, we know that if we upweight our search bids um, in the 15 minutes following a, a TV commercial plays, playing out, we get, we get spikes in the uh, click rates. So not only can we make our search more responsive, we can make TV and older media more accountable as a means of that. Um, but this session, I suppose, is about digital only. So um, I've tried to sort of categorize some digital innovations in sort of three areas. Um, the first one is focused. Um, and we've, we've already done a session on targeting and so on. And it is just really exciting about the way we can now buy audiences on an impact by impact basis, individually, in theory, with very little wastage, assuming none of the regulations get in our way and we navigate our way through them proactively. I mean, back in the day when um, Nick, Damien, and I were working together buying print, you know, ag aggressive targeting was probably dropping a whole load of loose inserts in the same postal district. I mean, now we're talking about hitting people individually according to their behavior, their social interactions and connections, their purchasing behavior. And I guess at, at its most logical conclusion, taking semantic data to really differentiate between a particular sports enthusiast and maybe someone who actually plays a particular sport and buying those audiences on an impact by impact basis in real time. So the game has completely changed. And as Damien said, it's not done via, was it the clenched fist, Damien? Um, you know, uh, via, via a negotiation. It's done, um, it's done via API now. So we need different people and so forth. Second one is fluid. You're getting the trend here. Like, um, a lot of them are beginning with F. Um, these mobile devices, they give a really immediate and seamless bridge between both the, um, the real and the digital existence. Uh, and I think it's going to get especially interesting when we move actually in store as consumers use them to examine products and, and increasingly make the decision on what product they're going to buy right up until the last minute. They can use um, scanners and so forth to get the information on the products that they, they want and potentially switch brands right in store, which is going to have obviously a very disruptive effect on all of that above the line advertising which goes before it. 
Um, they're also, um, as, as de devices become uh, more enabled and actual to, to actually make purchases, that's also going to seamlessly join up the whole purchase process. Um, the rumor is that the new iPhone 5, which is out, out this year, is going to have NFC capabilities, i.e. we will be able to scan the phone and then and to actually make a purchase, which means we can seamlessly connect someone with or sort of target someone with behavioral advertising, move them through to an interesting experience which builds an emotional connection with them, maybe with an iAd, maybe, maybe with a branded application, all the way through to purchase. So we can move people more quickly and more seamlessly through the purchase process. And it's only going to get more disrupted. You see things like Groupon, which, is, which had, I think it was 139% growth year on year, is going, going to disrupt it further, social commerce and so forth. Um, and the thirdly, uh, third one is, is fast. Um, and I think there's a natural assumption that um, innovation is all about creativity um, and um, ideas and, so, and maybe softer, softer things. But really, I think it can also be equally applied to analytics. Um, and I know it's not a particularly attractive looking slide, but um, this is just an example from our Intel team in Chicago, where they developed a methodology which enabled them to measure the business contribution of different pieces of marketing collateral, 150 in all, across paid, owned, and earned media, and then derive the business contribution that each of those made to improve Intel's business performance. So things like that I find are very, very interesting, and they're not particularly sexy when it, in terms of the, the kind of shiny technologies which are out there, but they make a material business contribution to clients' business. Um, however, I guess we need some, some guiding principles, and um, there, these, are, these are three to be getting on with, I guess. Firstly is innovation must have a purpose, which I know is blindingly obvious, but it's really, really easy to get seduced by, as I say, shiny objects and new technologies. I mean, we, Damien alluded to it earlier. It's got to have a purpose. It's got to make a contribution to a client's business success. That's what we're paid, paid to do as agencies, and that's what uh, publishers also support us in, in providing relevant audiences at compelling moments. Secondly, it must be consumer-centric. Talked about it before. We have to plan holistically. That's the, way, the best way to leverage digital media within the, um, the broader... Uh, marketing ecosystem. And thirdly, it's got to be measurable. We have to evaluate its business contribution, such as using things like the Intel's business value points methodology. So I just think we're genuinely living in interesting times and um, look forward to the discussion. Okay?